After leading the QMJHL with 127 points in just 67 games for the Moncton Wildcats, it's no question why this 19-year-old winger was one of the 200 players selected in the 2015 NHL entry draft. And you'd think after hockey writers described him as a warlock with the puck who cast black magic spells to pull off unbelievable passes, he'd be one of the first few players selected, right? Well, he wasn't. His name wasn't called in the first round, or the second round, not even the third round. Connor Garland was drafted 123rd overall, all the way down in the fifth round by the Arizona Coyotes. So what happened? Well, to put it simply, he's short. Despite the Wildcats coach calling him one of the most exciting players he's ever seen, standing at just 5 foot 8 inches, scouts were concerned that his style of play just wouldn't translate to the NHL. After being drafted, in his final year with the Wildcats, Garland put up another league-leading performance, this time reaching 128 points in just 62 games, earning himself a spot on Arizona's AHL affiliate team, the Tucson Roadrunners. However, in his first two AHL seasons, Garland only accumulated 41 points in 110 games. Man, maybe the scouts were right. But after failing to make the Coyotes roster out of training camp for the third consecutive year, Garland entered the 2018-2019 AHL season with a major chip on his shoulder, and by Game 21 he had already amassed 25 points, leading to his first ever call-up to the big leagues. Although he was held pointless in his first seven NHL games, in the 10 that followed, Garland put up eight goals, proving that he's capable of making an impact at the highest level. While he wasn't quite able to continue scoring at that pace for the final 30 games of the season, he played well enough to avoid getting sent back down to the AHL. In fact, not only was he on the Coyotes' opening night roster the following season, he was starting on the first line, meaning finally, four years after being drafted, Garland was officially an NHL player. He finished his first full season in the big leagues with an impressive 22 goals and followed it up the year after with 39 points in just the 49 games he played in an already COVID-shortened regular season. And in the summer of 2021, Garland was traded to the Vancouver Canucks who signed him to a five-year contract worth $24.7 million. While his first two seasons in Vancouver had their ups and downs, one thing stayed true throughout it all. Garland was one of the most exciting players on the ice every single night. Whether his team was leading or losing, no matter the situation, he'd never back down from the fight. Currently in his third season with the Canucks, Garland has continued to put his full effort into every second he spends on the ice and has quickly become a favorite among the fans in Vancouver. It's not all love, though. Thanks to his tenacity, feistiness, and refusal to back down against anybody, no matter their size, when NHL players were asked via an anonymous poll who in the league they'd most want to punch in the face, the 5'8 right winger finished fourth in voting. From breaking records in junior to being underestimated and passed over by nearly every scout in the league, Connor Garland has proven to be one of the hardest working, most exciting players to watch, not just on the Canucks, but in the entire NHL. Now, let's see how our boy Connor Gargoyle Garland performed in Game 78 against the defending Stanley Cup champions, the Vegas Golden Knights. Rashad scores! And Cole scores! Yeah, so the Canucks didn't get off to a very good start. Actually, going down two goals in the first 10 minutes of a game against a team as good as the Golden Knights is pretty bad. The Canucks got off to a pretty bad start. But remember what I said in my last video? This is exactly what the Canucks need. A solid comeback win against a formidable opponent right before the playoffs start. start. Well, with the playoff spot already clinched, I'm not even kidding, I saw this score as a positive for the Canucks. That's when Carson Soucy absolutely rocked Keegan Colasar with a beautiful hit, completely turning the game's momentum around in favor of the Canucks. The Knights took a penalty just 20 seconds after that hit, and do you want to guess who scored on the ensuing power play? Connor Garland. And then just under a minute later, Quinn Hughes was interfered with, leading to another penalty for Vegas, and guess who scored on that power play? Not Connor Garland, it was Quinn Hughes, but if we rewind a bit, you'll see that it was Garland who kept the play alive just seconds before Hughes buried it. 2-2 tie game, just like that. Arthur Silovs made a great save here. The Canucks continue to control the majority of play, and I really do believe it can all be traced back to Susie's big hit from earlier. Sometimes a bone-breaking bonk is all you need to wake up your teammates. The crowd liked it too. But Susie's effect on the game wasn't all positive. In the middle of a fantastic third-line shift, he did this. Why? Just a terrible penalty to take. And guess what? It only took Vegas five seconds to score on that power play. 3-2. This is an example of what Rick Tockett and so many other coaches mean when they talk about details. Such a small, seemingly inconsequential decision led to a goal against. Luckily, there was still enough time left in the game to tie it up, but that kind of thing just won't fly in the playoffs. And if Silovs hadn't made this clutch save to keep it a one-goal game, Besser would have never been able to snipe home his 40th goal of the season to tie the game back up. That's teamwork right there. 3-3. Three, three. 
Also, the last time a Canuck player hit 40 goals in a season was in 2011 when Daniel Sedin and Ryan Kessler both did it. That was 13 years ago. Thank you, Brock. Oh, and then if Silovs hadn't made another clutch save to keep the game tied, this wouldn't have happened. Puck to clutch to Dakota Joshua, centers Miller, off the glove, loose puck, they score! Connor Garland, his second of the game, and the Canucks have their first lead! Connor Garland pots his second goal of the night, JT Miller hits 100 points, and the Canucks win the game 4-3. Oh, and look what happened after the game. Now, let's see how Connor Garland performed in Game 79 against his former team, the Arizona Coyotes. Spoiler alert, he played well. Watch how he sneakily steals the puck off defender Michael Kesselring right in front of the Coyotes' net. Connor Ingram made a nice save here to spoil the fun, but damn, Garland never gives up on a play. He creates scoring chances out of thin air. Then Tyler Myers was called for being too tall, I think, but the Canucks killed it off, and then Big Hog set him up with a great scoring chance, but Ingram wouldn't let it happen. Still nothing, nothing. Quinn Hughes was doing more of his signature blue line line dancing. Elias Pettersson was farting on people. The Coyotes scored. one nothing. Archer Silovs was back in net after his impressive performance last game, and he was at it again. In fact, if he hadn't made this clutch save on a shorthanded breakaway for Dylan Genther, JT Miller would have never been able to tie the game with his 36th goal of the season. 1-1. One, one. Arizona scored a minute later. 2-1. That hurt to see as a Canucks fan, but you know who was in more pain? Liam O'Brien when he was flattened by Nikita the Kitten Zadorov. <laughs> Wait, no, I was in more pain. 3-1 Arizona. It is so rare to see Quinn Hughes make such a blatant mistake that leads directly to a goal. He's allowed a couple of these a season. As long as he gets most of them out before the playoffs, I'm okay with it. Plus, Zadorov kept crushing people and that'll always put a smile on my face. Except I don't think Quinn saw that hit because he was too focused on re-watching his mistake on the bench. The Canucks really started to turn it on at this point. Miller had a chance to score, Bluger had a chance to score, but Ingram stopped both. Then Zadorov was called for tripping and then Myers was called for cross-checking. <sighs> Thankfully, Elias Lindholm was back in the lineup after missing seven games with an injury, and he was out there killing those penalties like his life depended on it. This is why he's such a valuable player, by the way. Even when he's not putting up goals, he's doing this and he's winning faceoffs. In fact, if it wasn't for Lindholm's work on the penalty kill, Connor Garland would have never been able to score his 19th goal of the season to bring the game within one. Oh, and then thanks to this game-saving save from Seelovs and Big Hog hustling his way into drawing a penalty, we would have never seen this happen. Pedersen shoots and scores! 3-3, tie game, overtime. Besser was called for tripping. No fucking way. This looked like tripping on the ice. I'm not going to be mad at the ref, especially because in the middle of the Coyotes' power play, Philip Hronik was tripped on a breakaway and was awarded a penalty shot that he missed. So, the Canucks had their fair chance to score. But I will say this, it might be a good idea if every penalty was reviewable in overtime. Especially for the playoffs. There's no reason for any comment saying I'm wrong about this because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that Besser obviously wasn't the reason Genther fell here. It shouldn't have been called, but it was, and the Coyotes won. 4-3 in overtime. But let me be clear, the Canucks didn't lose because of the refs, they lost because it took them 40 minutes to score their first goal. Anyway, the Canucks are now 48-22-9, good enough for first in the Pacific Division, second in the Western Conference, and sixth in the entire league, and there's only three games remaining in the regular season. Tonight is easily the biggest game of the year so far. Game 80 against Connor McDavid and the Edmonton Oilers. Drop your predictions below. Congrats to these 16 people for predicting the score of Game 78 against the Golden Knights correctly. Thanks to these amazing knuckheads for supporting the channel by clicking the join button. By the way, the winner of the members only hoodie giveaway is... Leave a comment below and I'll find a way to send it to you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you Monday. Bye. Wait, one more thing. The new episode of the Nuckhead podcast is out now. It features fellow Canuck fan and independent creator, Diener HD, and we answer a ton of your questions. Click the first link in the description of this video to listen now. Okay, thank you. Bye. The last team you coached, the Vancouver Canucks, looking at how they did this year, do you say to yourself, gosh, I wish I had a healthy Thatcher Demko for, yeah. for a whole season? You know how many times my wife says, uh, what are you thinking about? <laughs> and, and I sit there. Well, Thatcher Demko.